It's good to see you again in Vilnius and now other main stories. National Assembly Chairman Nguyễn Sinh Hùng met Nghệ An voters and Prime Minister Nguyễn Tân Dũng met voters in Hải Phòng. Conference on Tourism Policy of Future Development in Asia Pacific begins in Ho Chi Minh City. International Community Health Vietnam's Maternal and Child Health Care. National Assembly Chairman Nguyễn Sinh Hùng met voters in the mountainous districts of Hương Khê, Central Hà Tĩnh Province, on July 2, while Prime Minister Nguyễn Tân Dũng met Hải Phòng voters to inform them of the results of the National Assembly's seventh session and listen to their opinions. At the meeting, the chairman heard a report on Hương Khê's socio-economic development in the first half of this year. The local authorities promoted agricultural production models while accelerating the new rural building. Voters were briefed that the 7th section of the 13th National Assembly wrapped up on June 24th after more than one month of sitting, during which 11 laws and two resolutions were adopted, 16 draft laws and one resolution were debated. They expressed their pleasure with our belief in the party and state's policies and guidelines in leading the socio-economic development as well as solving the East Sea issue. The same day, Prime Minister Nguyễn Tân Dũng met voters in Ngo Quyền District, Hải Phòng Port City. During the meeting, voters paid special attention to the country's major issues, including the national sea and island sovereignty, anti-corruption, support for fishermen, and infrastructure construction in Haiphong. They expressed their strong support to the party and state's measures in dealing with China's illegal placement of its rig Haiyang Shi Yu 981 in the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf of Vietnam. The Prime Minister reiterated Vietnam's advocate to solving the issue by peaceful means on the basis of international law, including legal procedures. He affirmed the government's resolve to successfully implement set goals and tasks, especially safeguarding the national sea and island sovereignty, demanding China to withdraw its oil rig from Vietnam's waters, and maintaining stability, security and social order to serve the country's construction and development. China's illegal actions in the East Sea continue facing criticisms from the international community. The Wall Street Journal has quoted an Australian senior government minister as saying at a recent conference that massive fleecing by China in the East Sea is feeding regional insecurity. At a June 30 Security and Economic Leadership Conference held at the Australian National University, Australia's Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull said the Chinese policy has been to muscle up to one or other of its neighbours, or all of its neighbours at different times. He added that China has more to lose if it continues to maintain the aggressive policy. Earlier, Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott said his Japanese counterpart Shinzo Abe will pay a visit to Australia in July and deliver an address to the Australian Parliament that both sides are committed to maintain the peace, stability and prosperity of the Asia-Pacific region. Australia and Japan recently agreed to strengthen security and trade ties as a counterbalance to China's threats, he added. On June 30, The Voice of America and BBC quoted Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung's address at the June cabinet meeting as saying that China has illegally placed its oil rig deep inside Vietnam's waters since May 2, in defiance of the law, morality and the Vietnam-China relations. China's move not only seriously infringes upon Vietnam's sovereignty, sovereign rights and jurisdiction, but also gravely threatens peace, stability and security in the region the media reported. As part of the latest developments in the EC, on July 2, China kept 114 to 120 ships, including four military vessels, to protect its steering rig. According to the Vietnam Fisheries Surveillance Department, Chinese ships continue to form a row against Vietnamese law enforcement ships undertaking their normal mission in Vietnam's waters. Vietnam Airlines officially launched an air route between Nội Bài International Airport in Hanoi and Haneda Airport, Tokyo, on July 1. 
the national flight carrier uses Airbus A321 for seven weekly flights, each will departure at 8 a.m. This is the ninth air route from Vietnam to Japan operated by the airline. Another route connecting central Da Nang City with Tokyo Narita Airport will be put into operation on July 16. Haneda Airport, which is 14 kilometers from Tokyo downtown, serves nearly 67 million passengers in 2012. It is the fourth global busiest airport and the second in Asia. Vietnam's June manufacturing activity saw improvements despite a slow rate of growth in outputs and new orders, according to the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank Corporation. The Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, fell slightly to 52.3 from 52.5 in the previous month. New orders rose for the seventh successive month at a solid rate, but slows for the second month running. Customer demand was improved, while export orders yields albeit moderately. The rate of job creation remains marginal. Some companies had to increase the number of workers as a result of a rise in new orders. Tourism Policy of Future Developments in Asia-Pacific Region Conference started in Ho Chi Minh City on July 2. The three-day event drew over 160 delegates from 17 regional countries. The twentieth function held by the Municipal Department of Cultural Sports and Tourism and the Asia-Pacific Tourism Association aims to share experience and knowledge to drive the growth and the quality of regional tourism. It is also said to be an opportunity to popularize Ho Chi Minh City's images and help foreign travel agencies and local ones form long-term partnership. Addressing the conference, Vice Chairwoman of the Municipal People's Committee, Mithi Hom, said the city considers tourism as one of its spearheads. The city has also been working hard to diversify tourism products and create a safe and friendly environment to attract more holiday makers from around the globe, Hom added. At the event, participants were introduced to a development strategy for five resort cities in the Greater Mekong sub-region and outstanding destinations in Ho Chi Minh City. From now until July the 4th, the conference will have discussions on relating issues such as development orientations of the tourism and hotel sector, the management of destinations and human resources, heritage and health tourism, and communication technology in the field. In other news, the Vietnam Cashew Association has called for commercial banks to lower interest rates for local cashew nut exporters in a bid to revamp the industry and increase competitiveness. Vice Chairman of the Association, Dr. Hoang Zhang, said that since 2006, Vietnam has housed the largest global market share of cashews. However, the industry is now operating at only 50% of its capacity. It is also overly dependent on imports, which increase costs, putting immense pressures to profits and cash flow. Additionally, the industry is suffering from small scale of production and lack of cash due to difficulties in assessing bank loans, Zhang said. In the first half of 2014, Vietnam exported 130,000 tons of cashews valued at 830 million US dollars. Vietnam aims to export 2.5 billion US dollars annually by 2020. To achieve the export target of 2.5 billion US dollars, it is essential for business in the industry to have ready access to cash provided by bank loans. According to Zhang, the industry needs to be revamped, and cash is needed to overcome the obstacles and meet the growing demand for cash production, purchase, and processing. Currently. The U.S., China and the Netherlands are the three largest cashew importers of Vietnam. At present, about 300 Vietnamese firms have exported cashew to 100 countries and territories around the world. The public-private partnership mechanism is considered as an alternative for attracting investment to upgrade the nation's agriculture infrastructure. A conference discussing a vision for agriculture was held in Hanoi on June 1 by the Ministry of Planning and Investment and the U.S. Asian Business Council. The conference drew state managers, business people, scientists and farmers. Participants said investment by businesses into the sector is still at modest level, under 10 percent, while foreign direct investment is even lower. 
That is the reason why the CEO should promote the public-private partnership model to attract the private serious investments, they said. Uh, in, in the United States, the, the, the state sector, the, the government sector in agriculture plays a, a policy role only. They are not in agriculture, they are not, uh, they are not state-owned farms like there are in other parts of the world. Um, the state gives land to universities throughout the United States to set up agricultural universities called land grants. Those land grants are a linkage to farmers in those states. The agriculture sector contributes 20 percent to Vietnam's GDP. It also accounts for one-fourth of the country's export revenue and generates jobs for half of the workforce over the past decade. From now to 2020, the sector is considered as a core driver for national development. And agricultural sustainable development is one of the country's strategic priorities. To achieve the target, the city should create favorable conditions for businesses to invest in technology, help farmers increase their product's quality and promote markets. Health experts from around the world have praised Vietnam for its efforts and achievements in maternal and child health care at a global forum held in Johannesburg, South Africa, on June 30 and July 1. The health sector has managed to reduce the rate of maternal fatalities to nearly 62 last year from 233 out of 100,000 lives in 1990. The figures for under five child fatalities were 23 from 59 out of 1,000 lives. The proportion of malnourished children under five was cut down to 15.3% from 41%. Global leaders showed their special interest in Vietnam's experience in providing health services to the population and encouraging the people to join the work. The international community has highly valued the achievements Vietnam made in reducing the rate of maternal and under five child fatalities. They also want to learn Vietnam's experience in fulfilling the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. The minister described multi-sectoral cooperation as one of the key factors to successfully carry out maternal and child health care activities. She said that the progress made over the past two decades was thanks to the party and government's strategy for developing the health sector, especially in taking care of mothers and children. On the sidelines of the forum, Minister Thien worked with her counterpart from the host and African health officials to seek trilateral coordination in the field as part of the South-South cooperation between Vietnam and other regional countries. A team of the Ministry of Health on July 1st inspected international quarantine work and the implementation of health declaration for arrivals at Nội by international airports in Hanoi. As a practical measure to prevent the spread of the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome caused by coronavirus, as from June 1st, all people flying to Vietnam from the Middle East are required to fill out health declaration forms before entering the country following the health ministry's request. The regulations are implemented at three international airports, Tân Sơn Nhất in Ho Chi Minh City, Nội Bài in Hanoi and Da Nang in the central Da Nang City. Passengers on flights from nine countries in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, Yemen, Kuwait, Lebanon, Jordan and Iran are obliged to complete the declaration forms. Deputy Minister Nguyễn Thanh Long, head of the team, asked Nui by airport authorities to give a clear explanation on the new form to the passengers and create favorable conditions for them to avoid congestion while continuing closely overseeing arrivals from the nine Middle East countries. On the first day of the implementation of the medical procedure, the airport welcomed and guided over 200 passengers on a Qatar Airlines flight to fill out the health declaration form. The Hanoi International Quarantine Center at Nui Bai Airport said it has two desks with body temperature takers. Any passengers with cough, fever and respiratory fellow serums will be isolated for medical checks. And that comes to the end of our daily program. Thanks for watching and see you next time.